I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now I know you're waiting. Praise God. Yes, I'm ready. But before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, I'll share something with you yesterday. And I, and I told you how Stephen was stoned to death. And before he was stoned, he confessed that I say Jesus. Maybe I should read it. And so, Shkila Brana Gadalia. Book of Acts. Chapter 7. And verse. Hmm, let me let me let me read. Okay, let me just read from verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he watch this. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens open." And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Mm. This was Stephen's testimony. The people were angry at him. The Bible stated that he was full of the Holy Now you remember, he wasn't just full of the Holy Ghost here. You remember when, um, when the, the disciples had this um, issue. So they now instructed them. They said, choose you seven men among you who are full of the Holy Ghost. And now Stephen was one of them. So they had to look at for people who are, who are full of the Holy Ghost and have a good report. So they have character and they are, they are visibly anointed. See? So Stephen wasn't full of the Holy Ghost because of this are you getting what I'm saying? He is a man that has been given to the Holy Ghost. Now, this man facing that crowd, he saw by his testimony, he saw the heavens open. Now, of course, it didn't mean the clouds were clearing the way, and then he looked and zoomed his eyes, and then he saw heaven. No, he he saw a vision. Yeah, he saw a vision. Now, that's why he was steadfastly looking. Now, what was he looking for? What was he looking at? Now, those are things you may not be able to tell. But the fact that he saw the heavens open by his testimony, and he saw Jesus standing, what was his response to it? I'll show you. Then, verse, verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of the young man. named Saul, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, look at what you're saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Hmm. 
I said, I went before the Lord because reading this, if this doesn't trouble you, um, maybe you don't understand some things. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. Jesus said, that's his ministry. The thief does not come to kill, to steal, does not come but to kill, to steal and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Okay. Jesus said something to Martha when they went to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, probably Stephen was there or maybe he wasn't there. I said, probably. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he's dead, he will rise again. And he who believes in me and is alive will never die. Jesus made those statements. Okay. So, how come this man is about to be stoned to death. He saw that these people were so angry and they were about to kill him. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw Jesus. And what was the request he made to Jesus? Receive my spirit. That was the request he made. What if he had made another request? What if he had said, deliver me from the hands of these people? Do you think Jesus would have granted that? I'm sharing something very important to you. What if he had said, like Elijah did, Elisha, Elisha, yeah. If Elijah did that, see, some of you don't get it. They sent men to arrest Elijah. He was sitting on that mountain. And he looked at the whole situation. And he said, if I am a man of God, let fire come down and consume all of you. And fire came down and consumed them. The second group came. He said the same thing. Until the wise captain came. He called down fire and fire came down. That is a weapon of defense. That is a weapon of defense. Now, there's this controversy that uh, Jesus was not pleased with what Elijah did. Who told you? You see, sometimes people don't understand. You read things and you don't understand. So, because I entered this now, let me clear this, this for you. So, the disciples of Jesus were to follow Jesus to a city. I think they were supposed to go to Samaria, I think. Yeah. And whatever reason, maybe they sent some, you know, the, the what do you call it now in protocol? Advanced party. And then they now, the people were not ready. They say, oh, since you're not coming to our city, you just want to pass through. Don't come here. And the disciples said to him, he said, Master, what nonsense. Why won't they receive you? Say, should we call down fire from heaven to consume them? Just like Elijah did. And Jesus said, no, don't. And he said, you don't know what manner of spirit that you have. Now, very clear statement, very clear drama that took place there. But the interpretation many gave to that thing that happened there is wrong. What interpretation did many give? I used to think that way until the Holy Spirit corrected me. The interpretation is God was not excited with the fire that. Elijah called them. No. No. Jesus was not rebuking the fire. Jesus was rebuking the disciples 
for thinking at every slightest provocation, you can just destroy people. That was the problem. The problem was not whether the fire will come down from God or not. The problem is why use the fire on people that just simply say, don't come to our town. How did they offend you? You can't live like this. That's what Jesus was talking to them. You can't live life like this. But listen to me. If you are faced with clear danger and the only salvation you can think about is fire, you better call down fire and fire will answer you. God will be pleased to answer you with fire. You know, you know people go, hey God, it's not God. It's not God that sent down the fire. Who sent the fire? Satan. No, I don't get it. Is it Satan that sets the fire? The man said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from... And you know the truth about it? If God even have to participate in that thing, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? The man just simply said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down. Even fire can answer him. Because he is a man of God. So he said, if I am a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. Fire itself can answer that prayer. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. But God did not rebuke Elijah for what he did. He didn't. God never rebuked Elijah. And Jesus was not rebuking Elijah. I mean, the man that called down fire, God had to send a chariot to come pick him up. <laughs> what? What? What other honor will a man be given? Are you getting what I'm saying? Even David that did everything right before God. Chariot did not come and pick him. Elijah that called and that you think God was not pleased with what he did. Who told you God was not pleased with what he did? This is the mindset that we have that we get into trouble. We don't know how to deliver ourselves. And the Lord said this to me. He said, I wasn't standing to receive him. I was standing to encourage him to take a step or to take an action. But what was the action he took? He gave up. <laughs> Stephen gave up. Yes, Stephen gave up. He gave up. <laughs> See, <laughs> there was heavenly artillery ready. All of the host of heaven was ready. But the man in charge gave up. The moment he gave up, there was nothing heaven can, could do. I mean, there was nothing that, that they could have done. Some of you don't understand how heaven and, and the spirit realm works. Elisha was surrounded and his servant saw and cried out, Master, we are surrounded. This is Elisha, not Elijah. Master, we are surrounded. And Elisha just said, don't worry. Those that are with us are more than they that are. He said, Master, you don't get it. We are really surrounded. He said, Father, open his eyes so that he will see. And they, then God opened. Now, it's not when he said, Father, open his eyes, that the angels, that heavenly host gathered. No. They were there even before the soldiers came. They were there. You don't understand. There is no danger that approaches a child of God that a defense system is not raised up immediately. Hmm? No, no. Anytime there is danger, there is always... See, didn't he said for he has given his angels charge consigning you you think that is a joke people perish because they did not activate their defense mechanism yeah people perish they die in the hands of wicked men not because God could not save, but because they did not activate their own defense system. Even when they saw, Stephen saw, he could, whatever Stephen had requested for at that moment, he would have gotten it. 
I'm telling you, he would have gotten it. But what did he request for? Just take my spirit. That's all he requested for. Just take me. Now that's like saying, stand down. You remember Jesus, even Jesus had to tell the disciples, said, hey, relax. He said, if I want to, I can ask. And he could make that friend. Yeah. He said, if I want to. You don't know what it took for Jesus to be crucified on that cross. You don't know what it took. I could make that friend. For Jesus to die, God had to, I come in, God had to re withdraw every angelic activity from the whole nation of Israel. I remember that. Now, you, you remember when, when Jesus was on that cross? Okay. Yeah. Eli, that Zabaya. The Bible said there was darkness between 12 and 3 p.m. You don't understand what that means. There was darkness when Jesus was on that cross. There was darkness between 12 and 3 p.m. Why was there darkness for those specific three hours? Now, that's a whole watch. That's a whole watch. 12 to 3. Why 12 to 2? Why not 12 to 1? Why not 12 to 2? Why 12 to 3? That's a whole watch. And listen, listen, listen. Every watch have specific angels that watch over that, that time. And every activity of those angels are regulated for that watch. Now, God didn't want to take chances. Because you see... <laughs> An angel could go out of line just to save Jesus. They have followed and followed and followed. All Jesus was doing was stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Stand down. When Peter brought out his sword and cut that, that soldier's ear, now, that was an opportunity for, you know, you know, imagine a fight breaking out in that place. Oh, dear Lord. Imagine what would have happened. It is not the disciples fighting. If Jesus had not calmed the situation immediately, that would have been an opportunity for angels to step into that battle. They would say, no, we didn't save you, Jesus. We saved your disciples. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You didn't call for us, but to see... Uh, we, we can't be here and fight will break out and we'll just stand back and be watching. Angels would have entered that fight. All those soldiers would have been on the floor. Not knowing what killed them. They only see one man, Peter, with sword. But Jesus immediately had to step in. And what Jesus did by picking up that ear, he hushed Peter, picked up that ear and healed the guy. All Jesus was saying was stand down. Stand down. Ha. Okay, what's going on here? And they followed. And Jesus got to the judgment hall with Pilate and they were going back and forth. And Jesus said, if my kingdom was on this world, my angels would have fought. And the angels were looking at Jesus and like, you think we cannot fight? We can fight right now. But Jesus was giving them signals, stand down. Now, when he got to the crucial point, they flogged Jesus. They were waiting for Jesus to give a signal. But when he got to the crucial point and sincerely speaking, I believe an angel would have gotten out of line to rescue Jesus. So in order for that not to happen, God had to cancel a whole watch. He had to withdraw. So at every watch, New angels come to take over, okay? Because the old ones go. So the angels that walked from 9 to 12 were to hand over to the angels that walked from 12 to 3. But guess what? When they departed, the angels from 12 to 3 did not show up. No 
angels showed up on duty because they were held back. Now that's why even the weather, there was darkness everywhere. And at that point, even Jesus had to cry out, say, why have you forsaken? You don't understand what he meant by that prayer. Why have you, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because there was no, you can't feel the presence of God anywhere. There is no miracle that can happen at that point. Everything was withdrawn. And when he cried out about 3 p.m., he gave up the ghost. Guess what happened immediately after Jesus gave up the ghost? Everywhere scattered. Now that was when the angels for 3 o'clock to 6 p.m. showed up. And that whole watch was calamity. Mm. How could this have happened? The Bible said there was earthquake. Things were scattered. Even the temple, the, 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 the cloth that divide, the, divides the, the Holy of Holies from the, the holy place, that cloth was cut from the top to the bottom. That was, now, angels were on rampage. It's more like, what is the, I mean, even this temple could not save Jesus. So what's the whole purpose? Yes, they were fulfilling scriptures. That's what happened. So don't tell me God will close his eyes and let a saint die in the hands of wicked men. No, brothers and sisters, please hear me. Uh -uh, uh -uh. That's not God. That's not God. If you find yourself in a situation like that, you have an opportunity to say the right things. And whatever you say, you will have. God bless you. Because my time is up. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.